Hey everyone, here is the next part of our public video series of making Daemon Claw in Construct. However, just to warn you ahead of time, in this video we won't actually be programming anything. As you might know if you've been following the series, we've been working on programming the level 1 boss behavior in Daemon Claw, and we don't want to reveal the boss yet to the general public until we can release a vertical slice of the game being level 1 and the level 1 boss fight. So we can't share that progress yet, but the other thing we do need to finish, and also just to give you a quick update if you didn't see our previous video, we're also working on finishing the splash screen, and that is now virtually done. So instead of talking, let me just run this and show everyone how this is looking. It should start at the uh, Bitbeam Cannon logo screen. So we want this entire initial experience to be done and polished. So as you can see, aside from as Corey noticed earlier, I've got a blank pixel under the pixel row under the character. I need to nudge him down a pixel. But aside from that, this art is done. So the problem is once you decide to play, <laughs> we still have this. And while it is perfect, it's still not necessarily perfect to introduce yeah, this. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> I know you really loved it the way it is, but I think good duf duf is. I think it kicks off the story exactly. It has the level of mystery that we're after, but I think. Right. I think there's a lot of people who aren't as like scholarly in their appreciation of literature and film that aren't going to get all those deep references. That's true. That's true. It's, it's only for the the sophisticated. Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's like it's only, might, yeah only for yeah. the same people that could see the beautiful new garment that the <laughs> emperor was wearing. They can get how brilliant this is, but the rest of us normal uh, plebs, it's just it's a little too highbrow is what I'm trying to say. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> So, and then the same thing with the visual. I mean, yes, this could come right off of a, a Jackson Pollock exhibit wall if it weren't pixels. <laughs> but, you know, we need something more kind of old fashioned. It's, it's, it's quote unquote modern. Yeah, we need, so, yeah. we need something more representational <laughs> for the lowbrow crowd of which I belong. So right. that's what this video is going to be all yeah. about, is us figuring out. So Corey and I already worked out, and th there are already private Patreon videos where we worked out the entire plot. We're going to try not to spoil anything. And in the editing process, if we accidentally discuss future things, like plot twists of the game, we'll bleep those out somehow. But in general, this should there should be no spoilers, because we're just going to be discussing the sort of introduction to the game level not like any actual plot twists or anything but that obviously decides what the artwork needs to look like we need to decide how few images we can go with for the vertical slice to make it seem like it's a very polished full intro to the game without spending a lot of unnecessary work to the vertical slice really nice and polished so we're hoping for like two screens one if that were possible but probably more like to worst case scenario three screens with a little bit of text that goes with it to tell the story to get the player interested in the basic plot of the game so without further ado let's dive into discussing the plot that launches the game and how to represent it all right so uh the basic premise of how the game starts you're obviously in this um kind of uh, medieval-esque Dungeons & Dragons style world. There are, in the background, a little bit ahead in time of when this game starts, there are already these kind of mythological creatures similar to Greek mythology. We don't specifically have minotaurs or anything directly from Greek mythology, but it's that same feel. It's kind of hybrid right. animal men type creatures. They seem very nature-based. They don't look like demons that came from another realm and they're like glowing magically. They're more down to earth mythological creature type. But already in the just prior to this game, the plot is that the human race was, we could say, like they were the last to spring up and they're like, they're spreading quickly. They're setting up kingdoms. They're developing their technology. And as less and less of the world around the human kingdoms and settlements, 
was becoming more and more kind of human, humified, humanified, <laughs> um, right, right. that these other creatures were becoming less and less seen. So we've got like the Birdman who you see in level one, and like they basically delegated themselves to more and more off the beaten path places from the humans, but everyone still largely peacefully coexisted, at least in the fairly recent history, just before this game starts. So what suddenly happens this day that the game starts is suddenly these creatures come back from where they've been and they start actually attacking and invading the human settlements, the, the different human kingdoms. And that's the general beginning premise. So those are why you're, you're fighting these creatures. That's why they're in this general wilderness. What we didn't do yet is establish why the hero starts in the level with the Birdman because it's a wilderness. I assume that whatever town or kingdom he lives in, that is the first closest place that is mm -hmm. now being attacked and, and uh, that the Birdmen are trying to control. Uh, right. So the story needs to get this general idea across and I think maybe the first screen to show could be cool to show a more panned out screen almost map like representing in a way human kingdoms and, mm -hmm. then, and then in the text say something like let's just say screen or image I guess image one sort of map showing human kingdoms growing and then say something like, and we could totally change this, but just to try to break it down into concepts. Go ahead, Corey. Well, I was going to say, you know, you could have enough view of lots of things that have been made. Uh, That's a great idea. Yeah. Showing the advancement of humans, but also... Like a collage. If, if yeah. we're going to allude to the fact that they're still thriving and growing, we can have possibly people in the shot building something quite literally uh, or something along those lines where it's like they're thriving you know as yeah. opposed to it it doesn't need to look like it's abandoned you know it's got to look like it people are living their lives so to speak so something there in there yeah. uh, even if it's a small portion of the image uh, yeah. to show that to some extent i think would be yeah nice. a collage yeah. of like that shows simultaneously like human kingdoms getting bigger and like castles right. popping up and then something alluding to technology or just the spreading population and technology. That sort of thing is definitely a cool idea. And then so the text would be for image one would be something along the lines of the human race or race was the latest because it's NAR, as we like to pronounce NAR, because of the double L spelling. Yes. Like like it's a pirate planet or island. But So the, the human race was the latest to arrive on NAR. We started humbly, but spread quickly. Something like that. Uh, another thing I thought about yep. mentioning here is, as we write this text, we started humbly. So is this from yeah. someone's perspective? I would rather not decide that yet and just get the okay, uh, ideas okay. out and see if we could fit this in like two or three screens max. And then yeah. we could like perfect, like I want the core concept in image and text and then another and then another if we need it. Hopefully not four, just because that's a bunch more art to do each time. Yeah. But uh, I, I think three is the sweet spot. Two would seem a little short and four is getting... You know, you don't want the player, it's an action game, you don't want them to have to... Like, we do already have the functionality where if you hold down the fire button, as opposed mm -hmm. to tapping it, instead of skipping to the next screen, you could skip the whole sequence. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah, there's also the potential, because yeah. a lot of games we did this in the past too, if, if we needed more text than could fit on one screen for one image, Great we point. could set it up that way. Uh, it wouldn't that's... take, I don't think... Too much extra work no no nah, not at all that's so, yeah. a fantastic point so we'll definitely keep that in mind so without being too long-winded I mean, yeah yeah no long yeah exactly yeah, like two button presses text. yeah two button presses for one image is still fine that that is an excellent idea and point the human race was the latest to arrive on nar we started humbly but spread quickly let's see something along the idea of it happened peacefully or almost it happened without notice. It happened slowly without notice. Something like that. Right. Slowly without notice. 
sorry about the typos, it happened slowly without notice. Uh, the older races uh, slowly fled or I fled yeah, fled so inherently. Uh, yeah, exactly. Migrated. I, I don't want it too negative. Yeah, the right sound word for that is, is tough to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, yeah, became more distant. It's almost like the word retracted. Yeah, right? yeah, that's, exactly. That's too technical of a term. Yeah. This. But I know there's a term. Yeah, retreated. Re yeah. Retreated is also a little too sudden. But I'll just use moved to more distant other huge places. Uh, that's the idea. That's terrible right. writing, but that's the idea. Um, mm -hmm. Until today peacefully and so it happens slowly peacefully and without notice dot 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 the older races moved to more distant harder to reach places as human kingdoms spread mm -hmm. there we go so now we definitely need image two so image two would be until today Something like this might be too wordy, but after so many years of uh, of uh, nearly no contact, yeah, that's the idea. I'll say or perceived. This is way too jargony. Perceived, too robotic. But the idea, perceived animosity. These older races in a very coordinated. Seemingly very, oops, in a seemingly very coordinated manner, have begun attacking uh, and taking over all the major human settlements, something like that. That's the idea. And that feels like that would already would probably have to be broken up into two texts. So, it, yeah, and it could be done yeah. a little more dramatically too, the way it's presented. Like because I imagine this is going to be a chaotic image of a yeah of, of combat, combat. Yeah, collage yeah. of uh, siege and combat. There's a inadvertent plug to Metro Siege, the other game we're working. Collage of siege and um, uh, combat of fanciful. Creatures attacking towns, etc. All right, so there's that, and then I feel like we definitely need an image to introduce the wizard. So there's going to have to be yeah image three. Uh, you know, there's it's sort of like there's two intros. There's the backstory, like the yeah. the, the backdrop. Mm -hmm. which is First, that first part, and then yeah. there's the the actual character introduction. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. So yeah, it would be really cool once we get our uh, musician. Once we find a musician uh, to do the soundtrack for the game, it would be really cool if during the first image it was uh, a nice, calm, peaceful song, and then it just faded out when you press that button to get to level two, and then it just. Uh, a new, much more aggressive song came in for the violence. You right, know, get, yeah, start yeah. to get people pumped up for the action game. And another thought is, you know, a lot of times, too, back in the day, people would do a game intro kind of before the title screen. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and then the actual character introduction is sort of after. So it kind of breaks it up so it's not one big, long thing and it's you can watch the game intro if you want to it should always be optional but i yeah. don't know if, if how you feel about that though or if you yeah feel i like mean this isn't going to be long enough yeah like that you, you know? can skip it and even if you don't it's going to be pretty quick to get through like it's yeah. one of those things no matter how nice you make it if we get one of the musicians that i have in mind which hopefully we will the music's going to be so awesome a lot of people will intentionally go through it slowly but yeah. that is that aside it should be quick enough that 
the average person, if they've already played the game a million times and just want to play it for the fun action stuff, they're just going to do the hold the button trick to skip the whole thing, so it'll be painless. Yeah. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't think that'll be necessary in the case of Damon Claw. If the required opening sequence needed to be longer for the story... The other thing is it would be a little weird probably to break this up in a sensible way to still be the prologue to the battle without mentioning the history. Like, it would be weird to just have, when you start a new game, if it just starts at, the birdmen are attacking and here's the guy. You right. know what I mean? Like, it's so yeah. much more nice and it seems more like a big full-on legend or legendary story if you just use that one extra screen to set it up peaceful and then hit your... Like a classical music that starts nice and calm and then hits the crescendo. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, so it's probably not necessary. Yeah, my own thinking on yeah. that is it seems like going from telling the world story, like saying I'm yeah. the world. There's a break in yeah. like from that point to here's a guy. Like, well, how do, how do we make that transition smooth? I guess right the or yeah. imagery or whatever. Yeah, you know? I, I think that's why it was my instinct to have it coming from first person. So it is the it is the hero. By the way, everyone, we don't have a name for the main playable <laughs> character yet. So the inside joke is that he's called, and this was this was your idea, right, Corey? Your uh, yeah. like a spontaneous <laughs> yeah. joke. That we would just, the placeholder name for him for conversations like this is Matt Damon Claw. Right. <laughs> but I'm right. Tish. So, yeah, we'll just call him Matt. Um, <laughs> so the text would be from the point of view of Matt, even when Matt is talking about the history. And th okay. that history is relevant to Matt because he's like, WTF, the, you know, these creatures, we, we've coexisted peacefully with them. For seemingly ever, as far as his short life is concerned, he's a young man. So that's why that history would be on his mind. Right. There are these other uh, races of mythological type creatures. I mean, you, I'm wondering, too, if we tie that into his history. Like, mm -hmm. like uh, maybe he's already dealt with some of these monsters in, a, in like, a very minor Yeah, that capacity. would be great. Like, like, he handles the occasional monster that might get into somebody's farm or whatever, you know, right. like, like, and he, he handles that, like, almost like a, not, not, I wouldn't be like a bounty hunter, but almost like a... Right. Just a, like a, a, a hero for hire. That. Like, like, that's, yeah, that's yeah. sort of his long-running job, but, like, he's right. been doing that recently, and it's right. been minor until the, the full-blown attack. And then right. it's like, he's, like, the guy for the job, so to speak, and then, yeah. you know... Yeah, um, yeah, there's definitely something to that. In, Corey and I never discussed this, I don't think. We discussed everything else around this plot point. Right. But right. it was actually your influence, Corey, that had me change the original character that we need to introduce in Image 3 that is critical to the plot right at the beginning you're introduced to this character originally in my mind he looked kind of like a hobo like he was okay. just this like reclusive kind of wizard almost like an obi-wan kenobi when luke first meets him yeah he was yeah, a pop culture reference yeah alone like studying some, arcane know. things yeah. everyone thinks he's a, a nut but in the, the more recent revision when i designed him and, and after talking to you about it before i designed him you gave me the idea that this guy should be like the royal wise man, basically. Yeah. Uh, and like, that's why he's designed with those really nice, fancy uh, robes. And so that really gives us the perfect opportunity to do what you're saying. That's how, so we could make it so that the wizard already knows this character. And when this stuff is hitting the fan, then this wizard character, we already had worked out. He seeks out this guy for whatever reason and gives him the gauntlet, which is Damon Claw, this magical bracelet yep. that becomes a different magical gauntlet when it absorbs magical energy. So image three is going to be the wizard character, who we also don't have a name for yet, giving magical, giving, we'll just say Damon Claw, magical gauntlet to Matt. <laughs> so this is the part the point the idea we need to get across is in the text is that suddenly i was about to join something like my brethren but it just it'll be clear he's already a warrior uh, i was about to join my brethren 
of our kingdom when the royal <laughs> since this one's Matt, the, the royal wizard should be Ben. <laughs> 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 when the royal wizard uh, am i adding an extra z yeah a wizard oh, you forgot the uh you forgot to start the text with in a in, in, a, in world. a world yeah <laughs> well that's when we get the voiceover done right i guess that's for the movie yeah now everyone knows what a terrible speller i am as well all right so one lone warrior all right <laughs> i was about to join and then you need that Trumpet, slow down trumpet, blah, sound. <laughs> yeah. um, I was about to join my brethren in the defense of our kingdom when the royal wizard Ben pulled me aside. And, nope. and, and, and there's you, the double S. I always do that. Yep. One, one thing you mentioned is you said yeah. he, he knows him. Is it just that he knows of him? Like, mm -hmm. like he. Like, he doesn't know him. Yeah. Already. Luckily, we don't need to get into that in this scene, and it'll be really easy to decide that later. And in other cinematics, we can reveal right. how familiar they were with themselves. But he's just telling the story right now, so he's saying the royal wizard, Ben. So obviously, he at least knows of him. And they're in the same royal guard area so that it's possible for the wizard Ben to pull Matt aside and give him and gives me this magical item and says, th this is again, this is not the actual dialogue. This is to figure out how to tell the story. We, I think we've beautifully fit it into three images and sets of text. And that was again, a fantastic idea, Corey, that we could have, you know, you press the button that one image stays and some more text appears. And I think it's perfectly fine to do that once, but I wouldn't want it to be like three or four times with the same image. Uh, so this is perfect well, my so far. thinking there really yep. was that, I know we have some screen space there, but like, yeah. you may run out of text pretty quick. Uh, right, with the mount, exactly. With the mount screen, so yeah. with the font and the resolution and everything. So yeah, just to show everyone. necessity on some of these cinematics, yeah. To remind everyone what Corey is talking about. Here. And I remember before you had developed the sort of character counter sort of tool to, to use for the dialogue. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, We can use a similar method to figure out the actual wording. But, right. Uh, keep yeah. it brief and everything. But, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll we'll perfect the layout of the screen. That is the other thing I want to talk to you about very shortly after we're done figuring out the general text when we're starting mm -hmm. to work out the actual images that we're going to need. But before we do that, let's wrap this up. So I'm not going to worry too much. I know I'm confident we can get these ideas across in shortened ways. Like we're all used to writing tweets. I'm confident we can pull this off so far. So I don't want to nitpick over the text so long as we know what the co sure. corresponding yeah. images need to be. That's way more important right now. So I was about to join my brethren. Ben, the royal wizard, uh, pulled me aside, gave me this magical item and says, I need to go on my own special quest so to speak we'll work that out better later and that he and the magical item will help me so i'll say damon claw again yeah will help me it takes power from defeated foes and becomes a powerful weapon adapting toward the specific weaknesses, uh, your foe, whatever. That's the, the idea, right? Right. Interesting. Like, like, I'm thinking of this, and unfortunately it would feel kind of cheap, so I won't do it. Like, I would definitely redraw it. Like, I, we could theoretically reuse the character art from the splash screen talking about the gauntlet. But yeah, I guess it doesn't make sense. We don't want to reveal the specific gauntlet yet. It would be the bracelet. But well, somehow... I mean, it's there in the title screen, so... Um, yeah, yeah, I know, but I, I mean, in the story to him, it wouldn't right, make sense right. for it to become the full-on gauntlet specifically against the Birdman because he hasn't earned it yet by defeating foes, so it would be jarring. But that does give an idea what we could eventually do 
once the other images are done, we could decide if we want to do a fourth image. Which my thinking. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, is we could actually do an ancient tapestry of a previous user of the gauntlet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, in a cool pose with magic gauntlet powers being displayed because that way like we could like a, it would be a cool it could be another cool collage travesty so image for ancient tapestry collage of previous user of the gauntlet in a cool pose with magic gauntlet powers being displayed defeating foes if we have the time and energy when the vertical slice graphically is otherwise done that could be a fourth image to break this up with because yeah. now we're talking about what the thing does which kind of explains gameplay well when you mentioned the fourth image yeah my my thinking was getting from this point in story where he's getting the gauntlet and then yeah. sort of i felt like there needed to be an image of him setting off on his journey like him going to where he needs to go like some yeah. shot of that of him on a road or whatever i don't know it feels like that's the missing piece of of yeah know, on his way so to speak um, yeah, yeah yeah i don't know what you would say there another thought i had too when you wrote this third image text and it would be tough to convey all this in a small amount of text but like he's kind of already got the motivation of wanting to fight the foes yeah and this guy pulls him aside like what is it that this wizard he's right? like the wise man for the royal guard so to speak so he's like a king's oh. advisor so he's so, high so, rank so he can pull he... aside anybody he wants and say, yeah. you're going to do what I'm telling you to do. Yeah, and that, and that so, speaks, too, to yeah. the main character, Matt. <laughs> right. When I was mentioning him taking out monsters occasionally, is he the loner type? Or is he? does he have high allegiance to this royal, this kingdom he's in already? Or is it like, what is his personality type in that regard? Because right. that was my thinking. It's like, is he yeah. just going to be... Oh yes, master, I'll do this thing for you. Like, well, master. not master, but okay. like trained royalty. Well, like, oh, yeah, trained, yeah. not royalty, trained knight yeah, who's master, going yes, to master. obey those yes, above his. Whatever, yeah, uh, kind yeah. Of thing. He, he's he's a, a guard of the city. If okay. a higher ranking person tells him you're going to do this, he's going to do it heroically, not as a slave, but as a soldier is right. you know trained to do okay. but there is a reason which we can get at later in the game and other cinematics why did the wizard pick him yeah. you know what i mean right exactly so that that's the things yeah. we're going to tease that that we're not going to go into right now <laughs> like i had a little idea about this so but i won't discuss it right now with you since that would be sure. a bit of a spoiler but anyway so in other words we don't critically need to do this image but it would be a cool image to do eventually for the final version of the game or the vertical slice if we decide we have the time and energy to do it. But we know the other three. And as far as that's a great idea, I, while you were talking, like you, you saying we need a transition from this cinematic. And OK, we know where he is. So he's somewhere that's like walled off where people are really safe because like the garrison is there. The king's guard is there. Mm -hmm. And like, so in the image, there's got a widescreen image where you see in the background the other soldiers in formation leaving the gate to go fight off the nearest attackers are the birdmen, right? Mm -hmm. So we see them leaving the gate and then we see up close Matt being uh, given Damon Claw by Ben. So that sets that up. And what I'm thinking is maybe what we should do is just use a little bit of additional tile art at the beginning of the bird level and actually have the gate right there or another gate so that when oh, it yeah, when it yeah. when it fades out and it fades in it's like oh okay like he's just leaving that same guarded area that the garrison or whatever uh the king's guard and this is the first environment right outside of that my only issue with that is mm -hmm. that in the first level there's going to be no other people fighting with you and right like, where did they go so right yeah it's a little bit far from town like he's traveled a little ways right and he's getting into there right because he's on his special quest right <laughs> yeah that, that's definitely quest, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's and everyone <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll put that here uh for voice over version matt and ben should have 
Bostonian accents. <laughs> Yeah, he's on a mission to find Ben's keys to his car. <laughs> All right, put this um, on your arm. Yeah, that's right. Put this, put this magic gauntlet on your arm. <laughs> It'll help you. It'll beep when you get close to my car keys. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, it, it is a better idea, but like you said, I have a feeling that's definitely going to require new art outside of these three or maybe four images already. And so how can we get around that? I mean, it's already to get across all this stuff really clearly. It feels like it well, definitely we have to have an animated shot that's full screen yeah. with him walking in perspective all the way. Yeah, no, kidding, fully kidding. animated. Yeah. That would be ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, no, like, yeah, I, I mean, it's going to depend how big we want to make these cinematic images. I mean, we have a decent size set up. But yeah, I, I didn't know if you wanted to scale those larger or smaller, or right. It, you know what what kind of difference that's going to make in terms of official Amiga version and how much space that's going to take up. So yeah, yeah, there, there is the idea of keeping them pretty quaintly small with some sort of decorative uh, elements on the outside without it getting too crazy. But mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't want it to seem too unappealing. You know, yeah, no, yeah, like and that was the other thing I was going to talk to you about is aside from having room for the text, my right. plan is that we should design these things in layers so that we can have a nice little bit of parallax, just like the splash screen does, so that each time you press the button and a new screen appears, it's not just a static screen that appears there. It does a really quick little kind of pan into its final position and, right. th and then stops just to give it that extra polish and depth. Uh, but it could still be within a general window shape like this. And even this, this is almost a quarter. It's like a third of a regular Amiga screen. So I think it'll look mm -hmm. great with a really good soundtrack and compelling but short text. I think that'll be fine. I don't think we need to do special versions, especially not for the first uh, version of this game. But I was thinking when you were talking about go going back to the topic of how do we get the idea across, what I'm thinking now is maybe have the wizard also say, uh, Ben, because he says a, a special quest for you. So mm -hmm. we could say that uh, Matt exits through secret tunnel to nearby wilderness. Yeah, sure. I mean, I suppose we don't have to show how he gets there, but I, yeah. I, I know what you mean about, like, it making sense that he's suddenly out in this forest. Like, uh, you know, it's it yeah. not like a nice thing to kind of... Uh, yeah, we don't want it to be jarring. Move to that point. Yeah, yeah. Story. Yeah. Yeah, so, but I think I want to find that balance of even the final version. We don't want people to go through a million things of text and images, even if it's their first right. time playing, because it's a fast action game. And of course, Mario pipes, you know, he just yeah, kind of... <laughs> that's a great idea. Like I want, like that was a thought in my mind. Do we want to make the wizard actually teleport him to where he needs do to a start? First initial, like, I'll take you to where you need to go. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. Spell, but no right? matter but what we do, maybe that's a little cheap, but no, no matter what we do, it requires text and possibly another image. So that's my point is either for the vertical slice, we don't cover it that granularly. We just say, he set me on my own quest, and then the level starts there. I think that's good enough. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And instead of says I need, we'll say sent me on my own quest. But eventually we could have, oh, we could do like, oh, I like this idea too. I could change the code a bit in the cinematic scene. So remember I said it was done in layers? Mm -hmm. Imagine if a new thing appears in the same collage one at a time with the new text. So it's the equivalent art of one full image to fit the thing. It's got, but it's, it appears it's kind of piece by based piece on text, based on the text. Know. That's really yeah. cool. Especially yeah, like for the that. collage things, that could work really well. And it doesn't take really much extra memory or time at all. You're producing the same total amount of art, but the way it gets delivered, it keeps it moving and fresh and and you're always getting something new every time you press the button uh, like it continues the story visually with the text then we could just show like a little image of the character coming out of a secret passage in the wilderness and then you're done 
Because we say he sent me on my yeah, own quest. Yeah, it wouldn't have to be anything super special either. It's yeah. just like he's get he's getting out of wherever he went, you know, out right. of what, however that gets there. And he's. So would there be a moment of. And that's another thing. Right. Do we want to tell any of the story through the game yes. level graphics? Because uh, so there would be actually a moment of him starting the level. Yeah. Maybe the wizard talks to him at that point and like starting his whole thing and guiding him or right well no uh, so to speak or lets him know like right. what he needs to do when he gets there or do we even want that at all or is it is it just going to be like okay go for it you know i would uh, say we limit that there should be a cinematic for every level mm -hmm. and usually when the boss of that that level's boss fight is introduced so you're about to fight so it sets up that character it sets up the drama all the moments where you would expect a pause in gameplay, we don't want it. So, like, yes, I'm finally ready to fight. I got through the cinematics. And then, oh, more people talking to me. And I have right. to. And yeah. it, the game yeah. is too fast action for you to listen. Or, like, we can't do full voiceovers for entire dialogue because of the technical constraints of the eventual real retro version of the game. So whenever there's full dialogue, we need it to be a pausable area of the game. So I want it to be in the intro cinematics you can skip through, in boss dialogues you can eventually skip through, and when you beat the boss, there would be that ending bit of dialogue with the boss, like, oh god, I can't believe you beat me, <laughs> like in right. every, every yeah. game ever, and then setting up the next level that way at the end of that previous boss fight. I think those mm -hmm. are the best times to do it. If there's a very special circumstance mid-level in one of the levels getting close to the end where a really cool plot point is really cool to introduce there, that's fine. Maybe it almost makes me want to omit him having this specific transition from the cutscene to the beginning of the level saying, like, oh, he's coming out of this tunnel. Because that's the only thing that made me think. If he's immediately leaving that area as soon as the guy's introduced, if it doesn't show that, you could just assume that this is him when he gets where he needs to go, and maybe there's time pass. Maybe there was even further right. conversation with the wizard, yeah, or whoever you know, the the high wizard guy. Yeah, um, th that's something. It, it's almost like it gives you that buffer of imagination. Whereas right. if you put that there, it kind of takes that away. Like, oh, he's going yeah. straight there, you know. So I think set me on my own quest does enough of the job and it keeps things short that we don't necessarily need like you said to to spell like it out graphically like he's right got, like he's telling him anything it just he's telling him yeah, yeah no matter what it's... Assuming, oh, i've got to take out you know animal monsters because that's kind of set up so right yeah I, I get keeping it, it yeah. more like really summarized and again like th that's the other benefit of this being first person it's almost like in a lovecraftian sense he is recounting the story after it happened, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it can be very summarized. And it's all like you're being told the story from Matt after the fact. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So no, that, that keeps it really yeah. concise. And you, it lets the visuals and the gameplay fill in the missing detail. Sure, so yeah. that's the way to keep it short and sweet for an action game. So I think in general we've got the right idea. I still very much like the collage idea when it's appropriate. So we don't want this video to be hyper long, so we're not going to like really carefully design out. We just needed to know in general what the text needs to be and how many images and stuff like that. So Corey and I can finalize the really fine things later and reveal it when it's done. So I had promotion open, or I actually will just go back in here. So keep that in mind. We can make this a bit bigger if you feel like that would really help visually, like the overall size where the graphics are going to go. Mm -hmm. And then just when we're doing the art, whoever of us is going to be doing any given part of any of these screens, we would just always make it in layers for several reasons. One, if we decide we need to change the plot in some way while we're developing this game, if we've got the environment of like the uh, Kingsguard area, in the background and the characters and everything are separate on separate layers, it's really easy to retool and reuse that same environment with the new stuff going on in the foreground without needing to repaint a bunch of yeah. stuff and erase stuff out. Yeah, so, like with the club or you know, something like that later <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. You just take the same characters and you put them, uh, <laughs> you know... The, the mid yeah, the mid game uh, party yep. time they have. Uh, oh no, the uh, ending no. <laughs> for the end of the <laughs> game, we'll have this really cheesy upbeat music playing, and we'll just take the characters from all of the cinematic scenes, and it'll be like, here he is in front of Mount Rushmore, 
and a yeah. beach at Ho- in Hawaii holding up, a, a, you know, a martini, you know, all that kind of stuff. We'll just reuse. We'll just put diff- something different in their hands, sunglasses on them sometimes, and like just like really cheap dithered, digitized photos of generic landmarks, places people <laughs> visit on vacation. Yeah, that'll be the awesome ending of the game. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then thanks for playing. Thanks for playing. Uh, we'll set up all this cool plot. There will be no plot twist. There will be no big reveal at the end. It'll just be thanks for playing. Here's a montage of silliness. <laughs> So yeah, well, I actually, I think for what we wanted to get done for this video, I think that actually gets it done. And now everyone has seen mm-hmm. how the splash screen is looking. So I think we could pretty much wrap it up now. And the next time we make a video addressing this, you'll probably see it actually being programmed, like with the things appearing. Once some of the art is done, we can actually change the events in Construct to make that all work. And like Corey said, make it so that one image can have, or one even image sequence can have the different text to go along with each button press. So that'll probably be the next public programming video for this video series. So I guess that is it for this one. Thanks everyone very much for watching. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description and we'll see you soon.